Hey guys, and welcome to my first, technically my first, bowtie vlog of potentially many. I don't know. Haven't quite figured it out yet. It's kind of new to the blogging thing. But I figured since this is my first bowtie vlog, I should kind of introduce you guys to some of the basics on bow ties, right? So, when you think of bow tie, obviously you think bow ties are cool because they are, but then you have their different types. Many people might not know they're, well, I'm just going to get into the basic archetypes. I'm not going to talk about, there's many deep, deeper levels of different styles of bow tie. When I say type, I should clarify, I mean like, as far as attachments, okay? So, you have your clip, what most people consider clip-on bow tie, and this is one form. Uh, this particular one's a Mickey Mouse design. However, on the back, this is what I call the hook. So it's got this kind of hook on it, kind of like a, a belt clasp might have, or actually more along the lines of a, like a dress pant or something without a button, you get the little clasp. So it's kind of got a hook there. And this design's very simple. It has a little drawstring on the top in the middle where you can adjust the, the length of the neck. Once you get the right length of the neck, you kind of hook it around, circle it around the neck. And I'll have a simple little, let me get this. Okay, here we go. It'll have a simple loop on the other end. And you essentially just hook, put the hook on the loop, and it kind of locks in place, right? Standard clip on. Um, I guess most people just generalize all clip ons the same way. There's a couple different forms. That's one, I would call this one the hook clip on. Um, then you have this method, which for convenience sake is probably my favorite because it's the easiest to get get on and get out, like if you're in a rush. Um, this is kind of like what I would call the seat belt attachment here. So you got one end kind of has a little belt locking mechanism, the other end is kind of like the, the, the male and the female. Welcome to sex ed guys, just kidding. So it kind of just clip, clips into place, much like a seat belt, and then you want to take it off really quick, there's a little button you just push, push down the middle there, slides apart. Really easy to get on, get off, Look fabulous, get home, ready to take it off, boom, clips right off. Super easy. My favorite as far as convenience sake, for sure. Okay, and here we got your traditional bow ties. Okay, this is what, in case any of you have not seen a bow tie untied, this is kind of what it looks like. It's kind of like two fishes on either end. Um, you have your standard bow tie, which is this. Pretty much just a plain piece of fabric. Two sides that kind of look like a fish. These are great. The only tricky part about these, as far as tying them, is you kind of want to measure the length out on the neck just right. And getting them to tighten correctly takes a little bit more finesse. Like them, but as far as convenience sake, these are probably the longest to get right. So if you want to make a statement, if you have a bunch of bow tie snobs, which there are quite a few of those out there, you know, they'll come up to you and be like, oh, is that a bow tie? Oh, is it a clip on though? Like, as if if you know how to tie a bow tie, you're not allowed to wear clip on, or as if you're a second class citizen if you wear a clip on bow tie. Personally, I can tie them in you know, many different styles, these are just a few, and the bow tie snobs really uh, peeve me off. That's more than anything. They think they're elitist or something because they can tie a bow tie. Super easy, guys. You can learn it in five minutes tops. Okay, so in which I'm actually going to show you guys how to do it here in a few minutes. This is another kind of standard bow tie. The only difference about this one is after you tie it, it has an adjustment string in the back. So the cool thing is with this, with this, this one, you can kind of tie it, get the bow right, and then you don't have to worry about fidgeting and getting the right measurements on your neck or anything. So after you're done tying it, you just adjust it to your neck, boom. Perfect bow tie. So it kind of combines the convenience of some of the strap to bow ties with the traditional, you still keep the traditional, I'm going to tie it type situation. Um, so it kind of gets the most about the best of both worlds, and you can kind of appease your bow tie snobs if you want, and then at the same time, kind of learn yourself 
you know, still have the convenience of tying it really quickly and getting it adjusted and not having to spend so much time finessing with it. Okay, so I know this isn't really the holiday to be showing the Grinch one, but you know what? I say screw it. You know, you're an individual person, be yourself. Don't let people tell you what ties you can and can't wear because of the season. I think the Grinch is an awesome guy and I think he he exists outside of Christmas too, guys. Come on. Just because he's in a Christmas movie, I, I think he's kind of it's an anti-Christmas movie, personally. Just like a Nightmare Before Christmas. You can enjoy it Christmas or Halloween or any time of the year, guys. Honestly. Okay. End of my tangent. So, I'll show you a really quick, simple way to tie. Traditional tie. Um, hopefully it goes well right out the first gate. Right out the gate. Um, it does take some practice and obviously if you're doing it yourself, best done in front of a mirror, something like that. But we'll see, we'll give it a shot. So the first step is not too much unlike a tie. You're going to take the two ends and then you're going to kind of, now with this one since I got the adjustment strap, I don't really have to worry too much about adjusting it to my neck, but if you don't have that, you're going to want to kind of adjust it a little bit more. Now, generally, since I'm right-handed, I'm going to show you guys how to tie it with the right hand. So, what you can do is much like a tie, kind of take the right hand side, kind of give it a little tug down, be a little bit longer than your left hand side. You're going to take it, just like your shoelaces, you're going to cross, they're going to cross, you're going to take, which is now the end on your, in your left hand, go up underneath your neck, pull it up, kind of give it a little a little tight in there. Then you're going to take the, the part that's in your right hand and you're going to kind of grab it and fold it over in a traditional, like kind of, you kind of start to see the, the bow a little bit. It's kind of like a fish. I see it as like fish facing left. You know, you're going to get this folded over. You're going to kind of crease it over with your finger, pinch it. Then you're going to take your other hand, take this across, and that's why you get a little bit more slack. This is going to be the, the middle of your, your bow here. You're going to bring that down. Then you're going to take these two sides, and you're going to make them kiss. All right? And this next part is the trickiest part, and it got me for the longest time. It's the part where most people uh, fail on their attempts. So after these kiss, I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see this, but you're going to see there's a hole in the back here. There should be a little gap. And what you're going to do is you're going to take this end of the tail, you're kind of just going to take it, you're going to slide it through that hole, like so, ideally, in a little bit more smooth fashion. Like I said, guys, do it in front of the mirror. It's a whole lot easier. You can see it a little bit easier. Okay, then you're just going to take your ends and kind of, kind of straighten them out. I wish I had a mirror right now, because doing it without seeing it as it, as it comes along is a lot trickier than it. It looks guys. Okay, so then you're just gonna basically at this point, you got your basic bow tie shape, and you're just gonna kind of go back and forth. You're gonna tug opposite tails, the front and back, and adjust it that way until you kind of get the right, the right kind of bow. And I'm not really sure how this is turning out I, on camera, but hopefully it's okay. And now in this situation, since I do have the strap kind of traditional bow tie. Once I get my my bow kind of where I want it, if it's a little loose on my neck, now this is already kind of adjusted to my neck, so I really don't have to adjust it too much. But now, say this was pretty loose, got my bow tie good, it's loose around the neck. All I have to do is take this back here and then kind of pull it across to tighten it. Now, like I said, it's already kind of adjusted properly. I actually just loosened it a bit. But think of it as okay. Think about it as any other type of the method with the, where you kind of just pinch it and pull and then it kind of just tightens up. I can't really articulate the correct term for it. I'm a little tired right now, but basically it just takes the rest of the fabric and straightens it and tightens it around your neck. And then your bow is still nice and firm. I got Mr. Grinch here. Hopefully, he's looking okay. He's a little lopsided. And another thing to take note of, when you are tying your bow tie, and this took me a little bit to figure out as well, generally, 
the tag of the, the designer, which will be right here. Generally, you'd think that goes on the inside, right? That's not facing out. Um, well, it's not that way, actually. You want to face the tag of the designer on the outside because the way they're designed with their patterns, if you face it on the inside, I mean, it's, most of the time you won't be able to tell, and it's kind of cool, but on this particular tie, it's a really intricate... Uh, Mickey Mouse, Valentine's Lovey Dovey, one with a bunch of words on it. Um, it will turn out upside down. The pattern won't turn out right. So you got to kind of face the tag outwards. So the tags will be read readable if you didn't have a collar on the back of your neck. So in this situation, I would wear this facing out on my neck. So technically, when I'm tying it, it's going to go around my neck like this. And small details, but. Trust me, on intricate patterns like this, you kind of want to get those right because you kind of look like an idiot when Mickey's upside down and you can't, you know, all the words are upside down. I made that mistake for a while myself. But that's kind of just introduction, guys. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, perhaps some more videos in the future. Maybe you learned a thing or two today, hopefully. Um, until next time.